All right, so now that we've looked at how to use a Z distribution table, let's use that information to solve some specific problems. So we're going to be starting with um, number 17 on page 251. Here we have a randomly selected person is given a bone density test, and the scores are normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So the problem we need to solve is we need to find the probability of a score being less than negative 2.04. So what are the steps we need to take to solve this problem? So stop for a moment and write down what you think are the steps we need to be taking to solve this problem. I suggest that you take a sheet of paper, fold it in half. On the left hand side, be writing down the steps that you think we need to follow and then leaving some space between them. And then on the right hand side, follow through how we complete each of those steps in solving this problem. Okay, so what are the first steps we need to be taking here? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to check our criteria for a continuous normal distribution. So that's the first step. And those criteria are um, one that it's a continuous random variable uh, so and this is true because bone density tests are measurements so they are continuous and they are random variable we measure them the graph is symmetric which will be true because if we have our standard deviation as one that will be uh, reflected both as a negative one and a positive one on either side of that mean so the graph is going to be symmetrical and it's going to be bell-shaped so those criteria are checked now we know we have a continuous normal distribution. The next thing we need to find out is whether or not we have a standard normal distribution. Again, this is going to be really important in terms of deciding which distribution table is the correct one to be using. And that will determine whether or not you're getting the correct answer. So the criteria for normal distribution here, we need to check our mean and our standard deviation. Find that they do, in fact, um, match up. So we have our mean is uh, zero and our standard deviation is one, which is the criteria for a standard normal distribution. So this means that we're going to be able to use the z-score distribution table. So we've checked our criteria um, and we've got the right distribution table that we're going to be able to use. Uh, so what is going to be the next step? Okay, well the next thing is we need to draw our graph and mark down our known information and shade the area <coughs> we're interested in. So looking at this problem here, um, I've gone through and drawn this for you for the first one. So here we see just a really quick sketch of a distribution. I suggest you do this for each problem so that you're clear in your mind what you're trying to solve for as you move forward in doing your calculations and using the table. So here you can see that we've got our uh, basic distribution density curve. Uh, we have our mean is equal to zero, all right, since we know that, and then we've got our z-score here that they've given, negative 2.04. So we've marked down our known information, and now we need to share our, shade our area of interest. So looking at this problem, what is going to be the area of interest that we want to shade in? It's going to be the less than. So it's less than negative 2.04, so we're going to shade in the area to the left of the z-score. Now, we need to think about how we find this desired information then, given the condition that the z-distribution table provides only the cumulative areas from the left. Now, that's not really much of a problem here, because this matches exactly with how the z-distribution is set up. So, when you're looking at the z-distribution table, um, we can see that the area up to that z-score encompasses scores that are less than that z-score. So, it's going to be a direct match for solving this problem. So we're then going to look at negative 2.04. If you go look this up in your t distribution table, going down for your uh, down the looking for negative 2.0 in the left hand column, and then following that row across to 0.04, you should get a probability score of 0 0.0207. So take a moment and locate that yourself in your t in your z distribution table, so you can match that up with the problem we're solving here. Then, now that you have that, notice that putting it in probability notation, we're going to have the probability of z less than negative 2.04. So the symbol less than is determined by the particular question. They're asking for it to be less than. So that symbol is going to change depending upon what they're asking you to solve for in the problem. And then, of course, the actual z-score that they're giving you is going to change. Okay, now let's look at a different problem. Here we've got the same distribution, but we're being asked to find the probability of the score being greater than 1.82. 
Again, we've got our steps. So we've gone through and checked our criteria for continuous normal distribution and standard normal distribution. So we're ready to move on into the steps of graphing, marking the known information, and shading our area of interest. Okay, so stop the slide here for a moment and draw a quick sketch for yourself. Draw out a basic distribution graph. Uh, just like I did on the previous one, mark your mean and mark your z-score of 1.82. When you've got that, turn the video back on and advance to the next slide and we'll check it together. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. And the next question we need to have then is, of course, we need to shade in what is our area of interest. So since they're asking for greater than, it's going to be the area to the right. That's the area that we're interested in. Now we need to think of a way to find the desired information, given that the Z distribution table provides only cumulative areas from the left. So that means we can't rely strictly on the value in the Z distribution table. We're going to have to do some further computation with it. So when we're looking at that, keep in mind that the area again to the left of the z-score is a less than, and the area following to the right of the z-score is all values greater than that score. So when we're using this information, keeping in mind that the a total area equals 1, if we want to find a value greater than, we use this particular formula here. So you're going to have the sum of all possibilities, which is always going to be 1, because that's the area. Then you're going to look up for the probability of that specific z-score. So I would take 1.82, and if you locate that in your z-distribution table, so you're going to go to 1.8 and then over to 0 0.02, you'll see a value of 0.9656. So that is the probability of having a value less than 1.82. So I'm going to take that value, subtract it from 1, and that is going to give me the probability of getting a value greater than 1.82. So pause the video here for a moment, make sure you have all of this in your notes and you understand how this computation works. And then when we put this into probability notation, notice at the bottom this has changed now. My direction for my symbol has changed to greater than because that's what I've been asked to solve for. And of course also my z-score has changed because they've given me a new score for this particular problem. Okay, last example to look at here. Now we're using again that same distribution and we're being asked to find the probability of a score being between negative 1.93 and negative 0 0.45. So once again, we have already stepped our criteria check so we know we've got a standard normal distribution. Now, so stop the video here and take a few moments and again draw your graph, mark your known information, okay, and then move on to the next slide and we'll check that together. So you should have said something like this, okay, and because we're being asked to solve for the area between, that's going to be our shaded area that we're interested in. So if we're interested in the area between two variables, this becomes a little bit difficult. We're going to have to do uh, some careful computations to be able to work around the fact that the z-distribution table provides only the cumulative areas from the left. So this is the dilemma we have to face, and let's look at how we can solve this problem. Finding the probability of the space between any two given z-scores, so here's z1 and z2, in order to solve that problem, we're going to take the area to the left of z2 and subtract out the area to the left of z1. So if you look at this, you'll see that the area that we're interested in goes all the way from the left all the way up to the z2. Okay. However, we're not interested in the area that comes up to Z1, so we're going to subtract that piece off, and the end result will be the part we're interested in, the space between Z1 and Z2. So, when we're looking at this, Z2, now keep in mind this is also very important, Z2 is always going to be the z-score furthest to the right. This is why it's important to graph. You can't just rely on positive and negatives in order to get a visual on this. You need to graph it out. So it's always going to be the z-score furthest to the right. So in this case, it's negative 0 0.45. So we go down to point negative 0 0.4 and across to 0 0.05, and we get a corresponding probability of 0.3264. Okay? And then for z1, z1 scores are always the ones furthest to the left. So here it's negative 1.93. We're going to go down to negative 1.9 and across over to 0 0.03, and the corresponding probability score is going to be 0 
So pause the video here, make sure that you can go through and locate both of these probability values on your own using your z-distribution table. When you've got that information located um, and you can match it up with what we have here on the screen, then turn the video back on and we'll move to the next step together. All right, so now we're simply going to take these and subtract them. So I'm going to take 0.3264 and I'm going to subtract from it 0 0.0268. So what am I going to get is my probability. Do the computations and then move on to the next slide and we'll check it. You should have gotten 0.2996. So coming back to our problem, the probability of getting a score between negative 1.93 and negative 0 0.45 is 0.2996. Writing that out in probability notation, we can see that we're going to have, keep in mind here, we have to put our z between less than and greater than symbols, so the z goes in the middle, and then we have our z1 value comes first, negative 1.93, and then z being greater than that, but less than our z2 value, negative 0.45. So this would be the proper notation for this problem.